You know, it's not very often that I actually do vlogs here on the Mike and the Hatman channel, but this one I really couldn't pass up. We didn't get the chance to talk about it on the podcast this week, so I figured, you know, why not take a little bit of time as I'm getting over another migraine, which, by the way, if you could pray for me on those, I would greatly appreciate it, um, that I could discuss this particular issue. So I have long since had issues with Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire, but not for any of the reasons that some of the online personalities, um, the very, you know, the small ones seem to have with him. I don't have a problem with him working for Jewish people or something like that. My issue with Walsh is he oftentimes come acro comes across as a Pharisee. And one thing that really gets me is the inconsistencies in his, in his views. Small government is good whenever it comes to gun regulation, things like that. People are responsible for themselves, so on and so forth. But whenever it comes to pornography, that's not particularly the case. I am genuinely bothered by Christians being comfortable with big government. Big government is not friendly to Christians, ever. Even if Christians are in charge, or people who say they're Christians are in charge of big government, it's still not our friend because other Christians still can suffer under that and usually do. I mean, big government fed us to lions. Big government threw us in gulags. Big government assassinated us during the Night of Long Knives. It is a consistent tool of complete and total oppression. Throughout history, we can, you know, continuously, f you know, just fail to acknowledge this. On top of that, it's also part of the reason as to why Christians lost the culture war in regards to, well, culture in general, and why it has taken a long time for Christianity to gain any sort of respect in the public sphere. Because let's face it, during the Obama years, we were not respected at all. At all. And part of that was deserved, in my opinion. And I say that, again, as somebody who is a believer. But we always make the dumb mistakes because we trust in government, not God. It reminds me of the Jews during, uh, or right before the time of King Saul. Begging for a king. What the hell did they need a king for? You have the king who rules you in God. What do you need another one for? But we want a king. So he gave them Saul. And Saul later on became a tyrant. Then David took over. And his line. And his line screwed up too. You look at the end of Solomon's reign. For example, the things that he did, there were things that King David did. <laughs> and this is what tickles me. This idea that we can expect man to make these proper decisions on a consistent basis and not infringe on the rights of others. Not to mention, if we make porn, blanket term, illegal, well, how do we define pornography? What is the skin quota, I guess you could say. In fact, allow me to pull up an example. You know, obviously this is a sign of self-promotion a little bit, but in my comic book, Inglewood, um, one of the lead characters, Angelica, who is the, um, the main, um, well, not main squeeze, she's the main student of my lead character, Elijah Wallace, there is a pinup poster that we have of her in her training gear where it's loose and sweaty and she's actually sort of pulling it to the side in a sexy manner. There's a lot of skin being shown there. Nothing too much, just a small touch of cleavage and um, her, you know, her lower abdomen muscle, but that's about it. But to some people that could be considered pornographic or at least turn them on. And it's meant to be. You know, it's meant to be sexy. So is that going to be considered pornography? I don't know. I have no clue. Where, where is the line? Is a Victoria's Secret catalog considered pornography? To some people it is. You know, I'm going to be blunt, you know, very blunt about something. I struggle with pornography addiction. And it is something that I have been working on and need to work harder on, admittedly, in my own life. I don't want pornography banned. I don't want laws against it. Because... 
again, it's always this, that's always the start. Because people who are censorious in nature will always push that envelope even further. I mean, you go on the internet, there are people who advocate for things that are even worse than that. You look in um, Arab nations. You know, the question is, is like, should we start putting women in burlap bags? You know? Mm. And that is generally my thought. Beyond that, what really gets me more so than anything, Matt Walsh is and has been a very notable Christian blogger for years now. He, and he and I are about the same age, oddly enough. And one thing I've never understood about him is that there are groups out there that he could be interviewing on his podcast, um, which gets more views than my show does. He could be doing things along those lines to promote groups that actually help young men with sex, ad sex addiction and porn addiction. And he doesn't. He chooses not to. Instead, he would rather rely on big government. That's ridiculous. And this, by the way, is why the church has failed young men with this. And I will say this as somebody who has done a lot of studying on porn addiction just to try to figure himself out. Churches sweep these things under the rug constantly. That is the church reaction to this. Whether if you are a porn addict, if you are a drug addict, you have a mental illness. These three things, the church has never handled them well. Never. Always swept under the rug. The church never gets together to help heal these people. Until very recently we have started to see groups form in certain churches. Like I said, I'm part of one of them. And I find that the inability to support brothers in Christ who are suffering from these things, instead just going to Big Brother, is ridiculous. Me personally, and this is just me, I trust God to heal more than I trust the government to heal. The government screws up everything. But God does not, because God simply is. And that's why I follow him. So, that's my thoughts on that. If you enjoy the Micah and the Hatman podcast, don't forget we're back every single Saturday unless something else comes up. And we've got the overflow usually around Wednesday or Thursday to answer the questions on the podcast that we sadly were not be able or able to get to. So, thank you for watching. My name is Micah Curtis. See you next time.